Mr. Luigi Gazzano, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mr. Granger, and I have been watching you for most of my life. Before I explain why I have been watching you, allow me to offer you my sincerest apologies for your most recent detainment. It wasn't the state that detained you. It was my people who worked for me that had you detained, but it was for your own protection. Mr. Gazzano, the reason that I have been watching you and observing you is that I knew your mother and father quite too well. Your father Giuseppe and your mother Moriah were my closest friends and they worked for me as well. But a tragic accident many years ago took their lives. And as for you, Mr. Gazzano, you went into a life of crime, which was very incompetent of you. I see that you jumped from family to family until finally all families and organizations had you blacklisted and that you were never able to do business with them again. And what did you do? You ran to the most important source, who was your closest confidant and friend, this evil Siggy. And now that you're working for him as a spokesman, Mr. Gazzano, it is a wasteful effort in your part by serving as a meaningless spokesman for evil Siggy. Evil Siggy is able to speak for himself. You don't need to speak for him. Even if I ever have to call him out, he should directly speak to me, and not for you to speak for him. But anyway, in regards to your threats towards the machine, will we given the code name Anonymous? Your threats are meaningless and pointless, Mr. Gozano. And it'd be wise for you to refrain from making such threats in the future towards the machine. For what Mr. Fancher said, the machine is everywhere. And that is why I, along with my people and this organization, hijacked Mr. Fancher's machine many months ago to serve our purpose. And as for you, Mr. Gozano, it would be wise for you to refrain from making such threats towards the machine. For the machine will eventually strike back at you without notice. You see, Mr. Gazzano, while we had you detained for some time, we implanted a chip inside your brain that the machine will locate you and will eventually destroy you if you ever cross the line with the machine or with us ever again. Now, Mr. Gilzano, I don't need to explain myself why we did this, but it's for your own good and it's best for you to refrain in the future from making any threats towards the machine. For if you threaten the machine, you made threats towards me and this organization and we don't take kindly to threats. So it's best for you to watch yourself from now on. Now as for evil Siggy, I think he's capable of speaking for himself and not for you. He's mad at this machine for making a fool of himself in the last few months. We didn't mean to offer this proclamation, but it was for his own good. So he stew over his anger every single time when he thinks about this proclamation that was made towards him. He should be able to get over it sometime. But as for you, Mr. Gazzano, you're just a waste of his time for be serving as a spokesman. And I notice that you're wanted by the law and by the families who are hunting you down. So it's best for you, Mr. Gazzano, that you should resign your position as the spokesman for Evil Siggy and that you should run for your life. 
or if you don't, you know what the grave circumstances will be. But let me remind you, Mr. Gozano, that the choices you make, whatever choice you make, you will know of its consequences. And you know the consequences has a price. And it's a price that you must pay dearly. My time is up with you, Mr. Gazzano, but until we meet again, I might remind you to refrain from making comments about me, this organization, or the machine name Anonymous, for it would be pointless and meaningless to try to ever pick a fight with a machine that you will never win.